at the end of this video presentation, you are expected to number one. Demonstrate your understanding about non-experimental research and its characteristics. Number two, explain the concept of survey research, its purposes, strengths, and weaknesses. This time, we are going to talk about non-experimental research. Non-experimental research is the opposite of experimental research. If we are going to talk about experimental research as a review, it is a type of quantitative research in which it undergoes the so-called experimentation stage. We have the pretest, we have the experimentation stage of a minimum of six weeks, and after a minimum of six weeks, we are going to have the so-called post-test. But prior to the administration of the pretest, we are going to have the so-called standardized test or the IQ test in order to determine the initial condition or the initial academic performance of the two groups under investigation before giving the students with pretest because administering the standardized test will ensure that the two groups under experimentation are of the same level of academic competence. Okay, now talking about non-experimental research, it is a research in which it doesn't undergo the so-called experimentation stage. It doesn't have the experimental group, it doesn't have the so-called control group. Non-experimental research is aimed at finding truth about a subject by describing the collected data and determining the extent of the subject's variables or investigating the relationship or connection of two or more variables of a quantitative research. As a review, we are going to talk about the variables of quantitative research. We have the independent variable. Independent variable is the giver of the effect. This is the cause of the effect to the dependent variable. And dependent variable is the receiver of the effect. It means that it is the one that receives the impact from the independent variable. Okay. Then another variable that we have in a particular quantitative research is the so-called intervening variable and it is also known as the so-called moderating variable. Now, if we are going to talk about non-experimental research, we are going to determine first the extent or the level of these particular variables that we have. Then afterwards, we are going to look for the relationship or association between or among these variables if we are talking about the so-called correlational research. But if we are just only determining the extent of these subjects variables, the research that we are having is the so-called descriptive research. Non-experimental research is also known as survey research because survey research applies the checklist or survey questionnaire as a research instrument to gather quantitative data. And as what I have said just a while ago, no treatment or no condition is involved in this type of research because treatment is being exposed to experimental group in order to compare the learning outcomes of the students who are treated with this particular new teaching strategy compared with that of the students from the control group with no treatment. Now, in this particular research, there is no treatment. It means we do not have the experimental group. We do not have the control group. How are we going to gather data? We are going to distribute survey questionnaire or checklist to the respondents. No? Okay, but if we are going to talk about uh, qualitative research, it is also an example of non-experimental research because all qualitative researches do not undergo the so-called experimentation stage. If a certain research does not undergo experimentation stage, it is classified as non-experimental research. How? Do we collect data if we are going to have the qualitative research? We have the so-called interview, 
we have the so-called focus group discussion. So when we say interview, there are only two individuals involved. We have the interviewer and we have the interviewee. Then if we are talking about focus group discussion, it is composed of three or more people talking together, discussing together in order to have the resolution of a particular phenomenon that they are going to discuss and this group of people might have dif uh, have different opinions or ideas about the existence of a certain phenomenon and it is the function of the researcher to have the resolution of this particular different opinions coming from the group of people. Unlike with interview, it is just only the researcher who is going to interview and the interviewee is going to respond to the questions of the interviewee. But, if you have the same guide questions for the interview, you can also use these guide questions for your focus group discussion. This, this is how we are going to collect data for qualitative data and it is non-experimental research because of course, as what I have said, there is no experimentation stage. Okay, now, this is it. All quant qualitative researches are examples of non-experimental research. However, they cannot be classified as survey research since no survey questionnaire is distributed to the participants. Okay, take note, if we are talking about uh, qualitative research, we are going to say participants. If we are dealing with quantitative research, we are going to say respondents. Why respondents? Because these respondents are going to respond to the statements or questions being found in the survey questionnaire. Why participants for qualitative research? Because they are going to participate with that of the interview and that of the particular focus group discussion. Because as what we have discussed uh, in the previous slide, quantitative research is classified into two types. We have the experimental research and we have the non-experimental research. And this is now the topic that we're going to discuss, have the deep understanding of this particular type of quantitative research is the non-experimental research because we have already discussed full understanding of experimental research. Okay, now, this time, we are going to talk about the characteristics of non-experimental research. Okay, number one, it involves three types of data. Primary data, secondary data, and we have the tertiary data. How do primary data differ from secondary data? How do secondary data differ from tertiary data? If you are a certain researcher and you gather your uh, data by your own, the data that you have gathered is our example of primary data. For instance, you conducted a particular interview or focus group discussion. You did the so-called participatory participatory rapid appraisal. You went to the community of the group of people uh, who are participants of your study, you participated with their festivities, you took uh, pictures, you took videos, and all of this data that you gathered from that particular event in which you are the one ga uh, who gathered that particular data, and this data are first-hand data, and they are considered to be primary data. Another example of primary data is the, uh, the written notes or the, if you are written notes that you have gathered from witnessing a certain speaking engagement. For instance, you are, uh, you are one of the audience of a certain speaking engagement and there was a very good uh, speaker in which uh, he has so many bright ideas about the 
uh, existence of this particular phenomenon and all of the good ideas, all of the bright ideas that you like from his speech were being taken do down by you, uh, being written in your notepad and that information that you have gathered from that particular event is an example of primary data. If you took pictures of this particular good scenario and you are going to explain your you are making research out of this uh, data that you have personally gathered is an example of primary data now if we are going to talk about secondary data these are the data collected by other people for instance data taken from the interpretation of other people from the primary sources of data for instance i am a researcher i had a research about the cultures and traditions of magindanaon and uh, the pictures that i have gathered are being employed by another researcher and that researcher is not the one who took that pictures it means that information or data that he is using for his study is an example of secondary data because when it's a secondary data second hand data okay what are other examples of secondary data we have the so-called archival footage of an event and this is usually example or considered as secondary data for instance you go to the library and there are collections of printed materials that and these printed materials are personally uh, taken by the previous researchers uh, because there are uh, so-called pictures there there are so-called diaries there there are so-called uh, biographies there personally collected by that particular researcher or particular researchers and you get information from this particular collection of uh, archives or these archives that information that you are using is an example of secondary data okay now talking about archive it is an accumulation of historical records it contains the primary source documents that have accumulated over the course of an individual or organization's lifetime it is a collection of old printed materials and what are these old printed materials we have the qualitative research uh, done by a researcher for instance we have the diaries we have the financial records we have the scrapbooks okay we have the computer files we have the photographs all of this uh, data that i have said were in personally gathered by a particular researcher are examples of primary data but if this data will be used by another researcher and this it is uh, already called secondary data now what do you mean by tertiary data okay actually secondary data and tertiary data are uh, very similar with with each other okay but the difference is that tertiary data are data taken from the summary or synthesis of secondary sources of data now for instance if you want to gather data about the cultures and traditions of tidurai and uh, uh, you uh, you cannot uh, look for a certain person that uh, that you want to interview because of uh, no available person what you need to do is to go to the library to look for books that uh, discuss about the cultures and traditions of Tidurai okay that the books that you scan in order to look for additional information about the cultures and traditions of Tidurai are examples of tertiary data then if you want to go to the online sources in order to look for the information about the topic that you want to discuss okay that data is considered to be tertiary data okay data taken from the textbooks thesis 
dissertations, journals, magazines, and online references are considered tertiary data. For instance, uh, if there is a qualitative research and that is a qualitative research being requirement, uh, being required uh, for a uh, master's uh, degree student and that is a thesis and the thesis was a qualitative research and that qualitative research of course uh, uh, involves the personal engagement of a particular person. Okay, all of the pictures that uh, that uh, researcher attached to that particular qualitative research are examples of primary data because the researcher used that the pictures personally taken by him in discussing the data, the qualitative data that he had gathered. Then if this pictures will be used by another researcher which are not taken by another researcher are considered to be secondary data now if another uh, person is going to use this particular summary or synthesis if you are going to research in the library the first thing that you do is to look for the title of the research after that you are going to look for the uh, statement of the problem and after that you are looking for the summary of findings and you like the uh, gathered data there the discussion of the data the results of the research and that data that you gathered for uh, that you are going to use for your study are example of tertiary data do you understand students okay now another characteristic of ex non-experimental research is that it uses research method that is applicable to both quantitative and qualitative research okay or data it means that non-experimental research can be classified as quantitative research and it can also be qualitative research as what i have said all qualitative researches are examples of non-experimental researches because qualitative researches do not undergo the so-called experimentation if a certain research does not undergo experimentation in gathering data okay this research is classified as experiment non-experimental research if a particular research undergoes experimentation stage in order to gather data and the data gathered are the data taken from the pretest and that of the post test and comparing the results of the pretest and that of the post test and that is experimental research okay in short, non-experimental research can be classified as uh, quantitative research, can also be classified as qualitative research. Okay, now, next, it collects data through checklists. Okay, these are the types or kinds of research instruments that we have for quantitative research. We have the checklist. I will be going to discuss about checklists if we are in the research instrument. And we have the survey questionnaire. We have the observation for qualitative research, historical analysis for qualitative research, case studies for qualitative research, document analysis for qualitative research. What is the meaning of document analysis? Okay, if you go to the museum, uh, you scan all the documents uh, being collected uh, by other people, and you analyze these particular documents, and that is document analysis. You go to the registrar's office, and you, got, you get the grades of the students for your research. That is also an example of document analysis analysis or documentary analysis case studies if you are going to study the case of a certain person who is uh, bipolar that is an example of non-experimental research if you are going to deal with 
the historical history of history and the de history development and influence of kulintang ensemble of Maguindanaon and that is also an example of non-experimental research okay then we have the archive materials what are the examples of the archive materials we have when you say archive materials these are collected printed materials okay like letters papers photographs newspapers computer files scrapbooks financial records and we have the diaries Therefore, one of the methods of qualitative uh, data gathering is diary counts. Once upon a time, diary was very popular, no? But as of this time, uh, only very few people are having the so-called diaries because we have already the Facebook right now in which all of the important events that we have are being posted on the Facebook and that uh, Facebook can be sources of our data. Did you understand? If you if you had a certain uh, event and you personally took pictures of that particular event, that pictures or videos that you personally took are examples of primary data. Then if that pictures will be used by other researchers with of course permission from you and that data will be considered secondary data already. Then, if that researcher using your photos or videos for uh, his research and he has already the summary of findings and it is already indicated in his uh, research the interpretation of the primary data that personally taken by you and uh, you look for you you accidentally look the interpretation of the researcher using your data that you have okay that data is already considered tertiary data because it is already found in the summary or the synthesis of the secondary sources of data okay so i hope you are acquainted with the so called archive materials archive materials are very old the materials personally uh, taken by a person or a certain organization for future references okay now this time we are going to talk about survey research how does survey research differ from non-experimental research take note as what i have said just a while ago all survey researches are examples of non-experimental researches but not all non-experimental researches are survey researches only non-experimental research that uses the so-called checklist and survey questionnaire are classified as survey researches. Qualitative research is a non-experimental research which uses the interview and focus group discussion as main uh, tools in gathering data. And this interview and focus group discussion are not survey questionnaires therefore they are not classified as survey researches okay survey research is a type of non-experimental research that aims to determine what a big number of people think and feel about some social issues about affecting people's lives and the community and this is the common research that is being conducted by the students we have the survey research because we are going to use the survey questionnaire I am going to teach you how you are going to make survey 
questionnaire because this is very important for data gathering activities. You cannot proceed with the data gathering activities if you do not have the survey questionnaire. And making survey questionnaire is a very difficult task but we are going to try our best in order to produce a survey questionnaire and this is your instrument in gathering data. How good your introduction of your research, how good the collection of related literatures that you have, how good your methodology is. If you do not have the survey questionnaire, you cannot proceed with the data gathering activities because this is very important. Okay, a research that uses survey questionnaire is an example of survey research. A research that uses the checklist is also classified as survey research. A research that uh, uses the pre-test and post-test is not considered to be survey research because multiple type of test is not an example of survey questionnaire. Do, do you understand? And survey research is conducted to resolve issues that affect our lives. Okay. Did you understand, students? Now, the individuals randomly selected from the group of people serve as representatives. Take note, we are going to conduct survey research if our population is large. Okay. Yes, because we cannot afford to interview all of these many people that we that uh, that are subjects of our research. Because uh, talking about the difference between the sample of the qualitative research and that of the quantitative research, sample in a qualitative research is small. Yes is small no while in quantitative research big big number of respondents that is why we are going to conduct the so-called survey research and we are going to do the so-called sampling technique and we are going to have the deep discussion of sampling technique in the next isla in the coming video presentations video lessons okay now, if we are going to uh, talk about the group of people, okay, coming from a very large uh, population, they are called representatives or respondents. And they are going to explain or describe the society's uh, thoughts, attitudes, and feelings about environmental issues or social issues there are so many social issues affecting our community and the very huge problem of our community right now is the so-called covid19 pandemic so it is timely that we are going to conduct a survey research about the mental health about the psychological resilience of the teachers as well as the students during this uh, pandemic so that is a very good research this is very timely to have this particular kind of research survey research regarding the effects of COVID-19 pandemic okay and that is called environmental issues because it affects it affects our environment our society our surrounding the community where we live okay now take note we are going to use the word respondents as what i have uh, discussed to you just a while ago for quantitative research and we are going why respondents because these are the group of people who are going to respond to the survey questionnaire that uh, being distributed to them why participants for qualitative research because they are going to participate in the interview focus group discussion and other qualitative data gathering methods for qualitative research neither of the two meaning we cannot apply respondents or participants if the subject of our research will be plants and animals 
Yes, because plants cannot be participants. They cannot participate with the interview and focus group discussion. Animals cannot also participate with the interview. You cannot uh, interview the animals. Correct? They cannot answer with your questions. Okay. They cannot respond to the survey questionnaire. Okay. Therefore, if the subjects of your research will be plants and animals, you can say subjects. Okay. And then, participants or respondents can also be considered subjects because subject does not uh, refer to English subject that you have. Subject means this is the... Uh, focus of your study okay subject will be used for this kind of research if you are going to use plants and animals for your research and if you're using the plants and animals for your research you are not conducting a survey research because you cannot uh, plants and animals cannot answer survey questionnaire meaning if you are conducting a research uh, regarding plants and animals, automatically the research that you are conducting is experimental research and that is through experimental research. And we can also have the quasi-experimental research. But take note, for educational researches, experimental educational research, researches, we are classifying them as quasi-experimental research. For pure science researches, we are classifying these experimental researches as through experimental researches. Okay. This time, we are going to talk about the purposes of survey research. Why is survey research conducted? What are the purposes? Okay. Number one. To obtain information about people's opinions and feelings about an issue. Yes. If you want to generate the perspectives or opinions of a large group of people, we are going to have the survey research. Because this uh, large group of people can be... Okay. Uh, from this group, uh, from this large group of people, we can have the so-called sample done systematically in order to get the general opinion of the public. Okay, that is one of the purposes of survey research. Number two, to identify present condition, what is uh, currently happening in our community. Okay, the needs or problems of people in a short span of time. Yes, because if you are conducting survey research, uh, there is a short span of time. Yes, okay. So, for example, what is uh, happening uh, right now is the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, if you're going to conduct a research about it, uh, so... Uh, we know that if the vaccine for the COVID-19 pandemic will be discovered, this problem, this problem will be resolved. So therefore, there is a short span of time. So we hope that uh, very soon the vaccine or for the medicine for this uh, very huge problem of our community, which is the infect spread of the COVID-19, will be discovered so that we can go back to the normal uh, co uh, normal uh, conduct of classroom activities, the face-to-face. -face. So you can do a research about this COVID-19 pandemic and it is very timely. Okay, because uh, three years, of course, uh, we know that this uh, problem will be resolved already. So there is a short uh, span of time. It does not last forever. Okay. Three, to seek answers to social problem. Okay, yes. We can conduct a survey research to seek answers to the problem being encountered by the community, by the uh, 
by the organization where you belong. Okay, number four, to give school officials pointers on curricular offerings, decision making techniques, guidance and counseling services, and teacher evaluation feedbacks. We are conducting survey research in order to give school officials, school planners, curriculum planners. Decision making, uh, uh, the people who are doing the so called decision making techniques, we can give them an idea what, what are the best decisions they are going to apply. No, that is why all of the decisions being uh, made by education planners are based from the quantitative researches conducted by the teachers in the field because teachers in the field are the ones who really personally witness the real problems of the school people at the higher offices are not the ones experiencing the real problem of the students but people in the higher offices are using the findings of the quantitative researches being conducted by the teachers in order to devise a particular program that will generally resolve the issue of the uh, school issue or problems of the students in the public schools or in the private schools and survey research is also conducted in order to give guidance counselors an idea on how they are going to deal with the problems of the students how what guidance and counseling services are they uh, they are going to provide with the problematic students with the students who are always absent from the class Okay, the problems of bullying in the school, the problems of teenage rebellion, the problems of uh, teenage pregnancy, the problems of uh, absenteeism, then all of these uh, problems are being attended because government officials, we have the education planners, the administrators and the teachers are uh, devising programs that will address to these problems. And all of these programs being uh, devised by the teachers and uh, education planners are based from the research of the quantitative research.